So yeah, Sue has kindly asked me to talk about an emotional intelligence program or EIP that was made available to midwives and the research attached to it that explored midwives' experiences of the program. So, but before I start and introduce um, the research team that included Dr. Katrina Falls McCoy, who is a psychologist uh, at RGU, Robert Spoken University, Professor Tracy Humphrey uh, from University of South Australia, and myself. So just to give you a little bit of background um, to this program and the research, we all know midwifery is emotionally demanding, don't we? <laughs> and we have lots of now evidence that many midwives experience high levels of stress, anxiety, burnout, and unfortunately, a large percentage of them consider even leaving the profession. So this is a really critical concern for our profession and can have serious implication also for the quality of the maternity care that we provide. Uh, one of the major contributing factors to the problem is known to be the conflict between midwife's aspiration to actually truly being with the woman, um, connecting with her, supporting her emotionally, and the institutional ex expectations on the other hand, which focuses mostly on the kind of doing aspects of the job, physical care. And it's, you know, being mentally, emotionally present and available to a woman's psychological needs, whilst also meeting the institutional demands is really difficult and requires a really high level of emotional intelligence um, in the midwife. Well, good news is that <laughs> evidence suggests that emotional intelligence can be learned and can be increased through actually education. So we have previous studies showing that, for example, in populations such as nursing or medical students, this sort of education has been really promising. But there's a like paucity of evidence on midwives' experiences of such education. So and therefore, we decided to do this study with the aim to explore midwives' experiences of uh, an EI program. But what is EI? So EI refers to the ability to recognize, manage one's own emotions, and also recognize the emotions in others and manage relationships effectively. So, um, alluded to the concept of compassion, I would say this is compassion, you know, how you effectively connect to other people uh, and understand their emotion. I think that understanding the emotions of others, again, that's another term for empathy that are both essential for the midwifery care. So the AI program uh, that was used in this study was a four month program and had six group sessions, a total of 24 hours of contact time with the participants and used a combination of in-person and online sessions. Um, so, and a program uh, for the a start, let me just give you a little bit of insight um, into the, this EIP, the program. So the foundation of program was actually based on the concept of self-recognition, recognizing that we as humans living in 21st century are conditioned to compulsive thinking. We have something around 40 to 70 thoughts per day, with 75% of these thoughts being negative ones. Now, the reflection of these thoughts in the body is called emotion. So when I come across a situation, I interpret that in my head in a certain way. In, well, we know it as a thought. And as a result, some chemicals are released in my body, causing some sensations, and we call that an emotion. So self-recognition is basically to recognize Although my thoughts and emotions are a part of who I am, I am not just my thoughts and emotions. I am the one who can actually step back from these thoughts and observe them, I would say, sometimes silently and neutrally, perhaps creating some space 
I'm saying, you know, I say to myself, oh, you know, okay, here I am, and there are my thoughts and emotions. So this EIP aimed to help midwives repeatedly practice this stepping back process using relaxation methods, because relaxation methods would help with the shift of physiology in our body and shift up the focus from thinking mind to the breath and body, and basically reconditioning ourselves. So in classes, uh, the midwives practice applying these skills in the midwifery practice, you know, and for women as well. So we use, and they, they use lots of scenarios, lots of simulated situation to actually apply these in practice. And then they had three big gaps between the sessions that, would, that allowed time for them to practice the land skills in real world with women, with, the, with even friends, family, and for themselves. So the study was a descriptive quality, had a descriptive qualitative design. Uh, we collected data using focus group interviews and analyzed them using reflective thematic analysis. Um, and it was, the data was collected in one Scottish health board and uh, midwives were recruited from different community teams. So the sample characteristics, yeah. So uh, altogether, 15 midwives actually attended the program, of whom 13 uh, participated in the study. They were all females aged between 23 to 58, so a good range from five rural and urban community teams. And they had between one to 30 years of work experience as a midwife. Next, please. So, what did we find? Um, I'm just going about to go to the findings, but uh, maybe it's worth mentioning that the names you can see on the next slides uh, are not real names, they're just pseudonyms. And we can move to the next one, Angela, thank you. So the overall overarching theme of the findings was the ripple effect. So midwives saw the influence of the program on themselves as having a ripple effect, starting from them, me and my relationship first, and then that led to a different approach to their practice, which was the second theme, and ultimately to feeling of confidence and empowerment um, in their role as midwives. And we can move to the next one. So theme one and two, as you can see, they are in different colors. Um, they had some sub themes. Uh, I'm going to just look at, we're going to look at every sub theme separately one by one. Thank you, Angela. So for some, the influence of EIP and themselves actually came as a surprise because they kind of came to the program thinking they're going to take something and teach to women um, mainly. Um, I thought it was more going to be based on having to deliver a session to women through all kinds of childbirth spectrum. I'm surprised of how helpful it was for me as a person, as well as me as a midwife. Next one, please. Yeah, just develop the greater self-awareness, just differentiating between the thinker and the observer. So that those terms were actually frequently used in data, the thinker and the observer. It's made me a calmer person rather than getting a stress, has helped me change as a person. To see things differently, not overthink as much, and just take a breath and calm down. So that's how they saw the, or the self-awareness meant to them. You can go to the next one. They provided some examples of how they manage their emotions in highly stressful situation, including the stressful clinical situations. So this midwife uh, works in a, a standalone midwifery unit. She said, she was having late decelerations and so that initial panic, thinking about so many things in my head. My uncle midwife was 45 minutes away and I knew ambulances were always going to be an issue. So it was just that kind of initial panic, but then taking that a step back. And I've never experienced anything like that before. It was a really strong feeling where I felt I was almost out with my body looking at the situation and just telling myself, all right, this is what I need to do. 
And this is the order you need to do it in. It's just thinking, taking that step back from being the thinker to become the observer and dealing with the situation. Next one. They went on to explain how this had an enhancing effect on their relationship with others, including family members as well. So it's just made me aware of like how I'm coming across. Um, because you can relax yourself, then we're a lot more open to taking more time for other people. And really taking on what they're saying, I think if, if you come across more open and relaxed, they're a lot more willing to do, uh, divulge things to you, whether that be like a staff or women. It changed my relationship with my youngest daughter. That's a winner for me, that she she's managed to break through that, to talk to me about her emotions. Next, please. They suggest that this helped them to um, better adopt a culture of presence. I think in the NHS, we definitely have a culture of just keep going attitude, keep going to, onto the next ship, onto the next clinic. It's just given me an opportunity to make the most of li little pockets of time. Just taking five minutes or 10, just with the woman, explore how she's feeling and go into that a bit deeper as maybe what I would have done before. Just taking that moment together. Next, please. And they utilize this skill actually in a very different and innovative ways. So Neil said, I had this couple came in for the first appointment and they'd had a really negative experience with her first baby. He was really angry. They came in the room like completely standoffish. I was really stressed. So he started thinking about the breathing techniques. And I thought I'd just be quiet for a few minutes. I felt it felt like forever, but just sat, relax my shoulders, listen. And after about five minutes, that atmosphere completely changed. I've never had that before. They were like laughing and like fine by the time that they left. It completely changed the whole experience. And I thought that was, that's because of that course I've been on. Next, please. Sorry, I'm struggling to move to the next myself. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, and sometimes they use the techniques for women with needle phobia, for example. These are the examples they gave us, you know, when performing membrane sweep or high blood pressure with women with high blood pressure or in latent phase of labor. She had a long latent phase and said, I just don't want to go home. I'm too scared. I said, do you want to try some relaxation? I think doing that little relaxation with her made her more relaxed and reaffirmed that she could do it at home. Then she did go home and came back four hours later, fully dilated, where she was only one centimeter when she went home. Yeah, it worked. She just needed that confidence to do it herself. Next, please. So on all of this kind of uh, led to the midwives feeling more confident and empowered in their role. It just kind of given me that belief in my role and the power that we have as midwives and the difference we can make to somebody's experience, taking it from something that can potentially be very negative to turn that round to making it a positive experience and helping them cope and manage. And Nina added, and yourself as well. Next, please. So just to bring all the findings together, kind of this is our interpretation of the findings that by learning stress management strategies, midwives, basically emotional well-being um, was promoted. And this reducing stress in self, I see it as like reducing the mental noise, getting some mental silence. And that silence would allow us to listen to better, better to the others. So 
or and feel actually how they feel, that sense of empathy. And this enhanced empathy, along with the skills they develop in alleviating emotional distress in women together, they believe that led to the more positive experiences for women. So this was perceived through like women's feedback to the midwife or the results that actually they observe for themselves, the results, the outcomes for the woman. So this is study, obviously, like any other study, had some strengths and limitation to the best of our knowledge. It was the first uh, qualitative study exploring midwife's experience of an emotional intelligence program. Participants' diversity in terms of age, seniority, and workplace was another strength. And of course, like, you know, most qualitative studies, we had a small number of participants. It was, the study was conducted on one single study site, one health board, and we included only community midwives. So which could limit the generalizability of our findings. So in conclusion, equipping midwives with emotional management skills may improve their emotional well-being, experiences of practice, and potentially the quality of the care they provide. Therefore, implementation of evidence-based EI education in midwifery undergraduate curricula and midwife CPD should be considered. And of course, we need further research. We are currently are seeking you know, funding and collaboration opportunities uh, to undertake large scale multi center studies, hopefully, to investigate the effectiveness of evidence based EI education on the well being of current and future midwifery workforce and the maternity care quality that they provide. Uh, maybe it's worth adding that we actually did a pilot survey study as well. Well, it was a small only on 14 midwives, but that showed that there was actually a significant increase in the levels of trait emotional intelligence and mental well-being in midwives after the course compared with the baseline, which was just before they started um, the program. So if you're interested, of course, Sue has kindly shared the article, but there, that's a QR code also for the article. And thank you so much for listening and for your interest in the topic. And this is my email address. Um, so happy to be contacted. Thank you. Should I stop sharing now? <laughs>